People who have had a stalker. How did you realize you were being stalked? Part 6. For more such content, please like and subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. Yep. Twice met a guy online. He seemed pretty nice but was older. Then me, well, I didn't exactly get how old he was because he turns up in my town from two states away and is in a military uniform. I'm 14. He attempted to come to my house, but my dad told him he was going to call the cops on him. Next guy was when I was in my early 20s. I was out with friends, fairly drunk, and stupidly agreed to give the bartender my number. He texted me the next day and invited me to the bar to sit while he was working. I was bored, so I agreed. I get there and he's not really someone I'd normally date, but he seemed nice enough, so I gave him a shot. We went on a few dates and had sex once. It was horrible, so I told him I wasn't really interested anymore. He started showing up to my work and wanting me to drop everything to hang out with him. He told me he told all his work colleagues that he had a new girlfriend and he wanted me to meet them. Also figured out he had a young daughter and wanted me to meet her too. I hasn't known him long at all. Last straw was when he showed up to my house. I didn't answer the door, so he started walking around, peeking in windows and attempting to open both the front and back doors that thankfully were locked. I told him never to show up at my work or home again. His reply was, baby, I love you. Ugh. Count two. I was 16 years old, and in my senior year of high school, I had known a guy who was 21 years old at the time that I had met through mutual friends when I was 14 and he was around 18 or 19. We weren't close, but he would sometimes show up when all of us were hanging out. The moment I turned 16, he started showing an interest in me and talking to me on Facebook more and wanting to hang out one-on-one. -on -one. Where I live, 16 years old, is the age of consent and even get married. I wasn't very comfortable with it, and I let him know. At that point, he started getting very pushy and aggressive, saying things like, you're not that pretty anyways, and you'll never find anyone as good as me. He also would threaten to hurt me. At that point, I told him that I was done with his shit, and if he came near me that I would call the police, I ended up blocking him on all social media. He then started to come to my house and leave little gifts behind. The first one was a fake rose that was stabbed into our front lawn. He would also leave bags of candy on the porch. After this, things started to escalate drastically, and my parents were 100. Aware of this, the day before Halloween at 7 a.m., he showed up at my house and knocked on the door. My mother answered the door to be greeted by him. He gave her a gift basket and told her to give it to me. I became very fearful and had a strong feeling that he was going to hang around that morning in anticipation that I would walk to school. For context, I walk to school alone every day because my parents forced me to and no other kids from my school lived in the same neighborhood. I asked my mother if she would drive me because I was afraid he would be outside, but she refused and told me I was being paranoid. Lo and behold, I hadn't walked more than 10 feet away from my house, and there he was crossing the street towards me. I immediately turned around and booked it back home on the verge of tears because of how scared I was. He was screaming for me, saying, I just want to talk. I got back inside and told my mother. I pleaded to her to call the police, but she refused. Her response broke me and made me feel helpless and unsafe. She said, and what are they going to do about it? There's nothing I can do and they won't do anything. Just go to school and deal with it. She offered to drive me halfway to school because she didn't want to make the full five-minute drive. She drove me two blocks down and dropped me off at a park that was somewhat close to my school. I crossed through this park every day to get to school. I was still very fearful that he would be there because he knew my Rudy that I walked. She told me to walk fast if I was so scared, started to jog across the park, and I looked behind me to see him just standing there and staring at me. I started sprinting as fast as I could, but I was lucky he didn't follow me. When I got to school, I told everyone that I could. My friends, some of my teachers, and my counselor, but nobody seemed to care. Only one of friends was kind enough to give me ride when he could, but our friendship didn't last long because he saw my dire situation as a way to hook up with me. After that day, my mental health plummeted, and I developed severe paranoia. I didn't want to go outside anymore, and I struggled to walk to school every day. 
He would often carve our initials around the park so I would see, and he would wait outside my school across the street in a public area after I got out. I ended up taking different routes that would make my walk go from 30 minutes to one hour and a half because I was scared for my life. This went on for almost the entire school year until I was able to get my first car, which I am so grateful for. No thanks to anyone as nobody helped me. All of my support systems failed me, and no one seemed to care. I didn't have a phone to call the police when he was actively stalking me, and at the time I wasn't educated enough to know that I could call a non-emergency line to start a case. I was basically told that there was nothing anyone could do, and I needed to just deal with it and hope I don't get murdered or raped. It's been ten years, and I am still full of resentment and hatred. Nobody did anything to help me. I suffer from a lot of PTSD and paranoia now because of it. Account 3 He was a patient at a clinic I work at. He came back after a week without an appointment, but I wasn't able to accommodate him due to my schedule being full. Secretary asked him to set an appointment another day, came back a few minutes with a Sunday for me that was on my lunch break. My rad tech told me to throw it as she was creeped out because he was still lingering outside the clinic. Even asked my male co-worker if I was married, but co-worker didn't give any info about me. He stayed for hours until we had to call security to escort him out of the building. Had to have my brother pick me up to make sure he won't follow me home. It went on for months. He would just pop out and hang outside the clinic. There was an instance where he brought me food, but I would reject it. He even made a reservation at a restaurant at Valentine's Day. Good thing we had a policy at the clinic to not give our personal numbers. He would just text the clinic asking about me. I replied through text, pretending to be the secretary, and told him that he was disturbing the clinic and would be pressing charges against him if this continues. He did stop after that. It made me really paranoid for that duration. I had to be more hyper-aware of my surroundings, and I had to get a pepper spray. What was worse is when I sought help from my male co-workers and managers, bosses. One of my male co-workers was even telling me to milk it and have him deliver us food. My bosses didn't even care. One of my senior female co-workers tried to talk to him, but it didn't work. A friend of mine even constantly joked about it. It really felt like I was on my own. Whenever it would come up, I will be constantly reminded of how awful it felt being stalked. Account 4. I once had dinner with a woman that mentioned near the end of our meal to not get worried, but her stalker was in the restaurant doing what stalkers do best. I never went out with her again. I felt that she was almost proud of it. Account 5. Mine was an ex-boyfriend. We dated young. I was 13 and he was 15. Dated for a few years. 3. 4. Anytime I'd make new friends or do anything without him, he got controlling. So we broke up. He started dating a new girl, and apparently they'd be at his place. And if he saw my car, model and color, he'd chase it down the street. It wasn't my car since I had a fairly popular one. One time he did find my car, though. He had this poor girl in the car with him and followed me a good ten miles back to the apartment I was living at with my mom that had a gate and followed me through, parked his car blocking mine in. And that's when I noticed him. He got out crying and trying to get close to me, so I ran inside and locked the doors. My mom was out of town. He left shortly after, middle of the night. I heard something outside my window and called my family friend. I was probably 17, so didn't think to call the cops, who showed up and found this guy outside my window. He quietly approached him and held a gun to his head and questioned him. Apparently, he had a backpack with rope, a knife, and some vials of God knows what. Don't ask me why the cops weren't called. Years later, he went to jail for mass manufacturing and distribution of narcotics and somehow skipped town. And I'm pretty sure fell off the face of the earth. I was the first call he made from jail, but the collect call wouldn't go through. I called his brother and they dealt with it, but I will always fear him showing up randomly. Account 6. Had an ex that cheated. We broke up. He had gone to a hockey game one night and sent me and another friend videos from the game. I didn't interact or reply to any texts in the group. I was able to read their messages, though and saw a text he sent that said a street was wet from having the fire hydrants drained. 
The next morning, my dad had mentioned how they had drained the fire hydrants on our street. I texted my ex and asked what street he had been on that had drained the fire hydrants. His reply was, yours, silly. My street was not on his way home from the game. My town wasn't even on his way home from the city he had been in. I asked why he had driven down my street and he said to be closer to me. That was the only time I knew that he did that. Still terrified me that he did it. Made me wonder if it happened other times. Account 7. My ex-boyfriend. We dated for two years in high school. He confessed he was into dead bodies, abused me, and cheated a lot. So one day I just ghosted him. I was already in legal trouble over him, and I just had enough. Later I got into a new relationship with my current SO. One night, a bit before my court case, I get a text from him and several calls. I block him and show my lawyer thought that a lawyer mentioning your calls in court that your crazy-ass grandma attended would be a big enough leave me alone, but evidently not. Fast forward, I'm selling an old chest binder. He finds me somehow and starts harassing me through comments on my listings on the selling app I'm using. Later, I'm looking at an old social media of mine for some pics of a friend and I, and realized had made several accounts to continue messaging me, including mentioning my BF. He also got my number somehow a few months back. I think he's married now. I used to keep an eye on his crazy ass to make sure he wasn't too close to where I live now, but I haven't checked since his last stunt. This is the tip of the crazy iceberg for him and his family. But anyway, if you're dating a guy who lies about having an Irish accent, and his dad being in a cult, please get your man. I've already had to call the police once over this. It's been three years, and he was messaging me, begging me back while y'all were together. Account 8. Woman down the street? I think she is mentally deranged, but she's fully functioning with a job and everything. It got to the point that she would drive by our house and look in our window and honk her horn. And then one day she stops and says, I haven't seen so-and-so eating breakfast in the morning for a while. Are they okay? Full-on sketchy as fuck. I told one of the most gossipy neighbors in the area what she was doing. And it slowed down to the point I don't notice her anymore, but she still makes me worried, and she's not the only one. Account 9. I may have written too much. While it wasn't a physical stalker, they were still a stalker nonetheless. So, a lot of this requires context, and it was also partially my fault. To start, I was in a friend group with about six or so people. We usually hung out on Xbox and played games together. One of the friends was a girl, and she was already dating one of our friends. One night, she asked me if I wanted to play a game with her since I was the only one on, and so I agreed. After a match or two, I could tell that she was starting to hit on me, and after a while, I started to hit on her back. Now I knew this was wrong. She was still dating someone, let alone a friend of mine. But we went further anyways, and one day it kind of hit me that what I was doing was really not okay. So I told him about what me and her had been doing. Now I should point out that while he was my friend, he was mostly my friend's friend and didn't like me as much. So when I told him about this, he didn't quite believe me, thinking I was trying to break them up for my own gain. So the next time she would do something sexual while we were a call, I took a screenshot and sent it to him. He confronted her about it and spoon-fed him lies, telling him that I harassed her into undressing, and at one point said I hacked her camera. He was understandably furious at me, while none of it was true. He didn't know that. So I understand why he was mad. She also threatened to call the cops on me for things I didn't ever do. This did not sit well with me. My closest friends in the group knew me better than they did and knew I would never do anything like. And while others had their doubts about what she was saying, still didn't want me around anymore. She would later confess to them that she was lying to them and kept on trying to get me to talk to her, but I always ignored her. She realized that it wasn't going to work and made alt accounts to try and contact me on them. Once I realized it was her, I promptly blocked them. She would then go and get random dudes on the internet to threaten me and try to get me to unblock her. She still does it to this day and I have no thoughts of talking to her. This was way longer than it needed to be, wasn't it? Sorry, this is my first time doing this so I wasn't sure how much detail to include. TLDRX tried to get me to come back to her with several alt accounts and friends accounts and tried to get me put in jail and still does it. Account 10. 
I had a stalker in virtual reality on Flickr for quite some time. They went as far as adding my friends on Skype using my screen name and posed as me in a serious manner. I confronted them and aggressively stalked them back even after they blocked me. Ultimately, we both agreed to block each other, but throughout the years, I've always been able to tell when she resurfaces and tries to befriend me. There are little things that give it away, and she's never very smart about approaching me. She loved my artwork, and it was flattering on some level, but still hurt when she pretended to be me and used my net handle in the community I was a part of. Account 11. Once meet a hot girl on a dating app. We chatted and talked about anything, nothing serious going on. She sent me a selfie, I sent a selfie, normal stuff. She asked me for my FB, I agreed, then shit start to hit the fan. She edited a picture of her and someone else, like a cousin, I suppose, in which they were side by side. She erased the head of the other and shopped my head. She put on her status that she was in a relationship with me and that we were engaged, and she uploaded pics with phrases like, we're in love forever and ever, found the one, and all the bitches better back off, and so, but she had set up that stuff as private, so I had no idea of that. I was not aware of all this, by the way, and I got wind of it later, bear with me. She started to hint that we should be together on the chat. I started to see red flags, so I carefully avoided those topics, because I had the feeling that she was a cool girl, and did not wanted to ruin the friendship that we had up to that point on time. Then suddenly, one of my female classmates wrote me, say, buddy, who's this chick that sent me this messages? And then she showed me a couple of screenshots of messages where she was threatening to find and kill my classmate because we were far too close in the pic. It was my end of year classroom pic, so you guys can have an idea. Then I proceeded to investigate that girl and ran into her FB and all that weird stuff, and the cherry on top came up when she literally ordered me to drop everything and catch the next flight to Spain because her maternal grandpa was dying. When I asked why, she told me that it was my responsibility to be there, and she would not allow for anything else than me being on the next flight. Yeah? Right. I immediately yanked the cord and cut all the ties with her, changed FB accounts and whatnot, boy. She was crazy AF. Account 12. I was in a Boy Scouts-related group with a friend. We're both female. After we graduated high school, she told me how she had been groomed by our troop leader into horrible things. And because he worked in security, he had spied on her and tracked her, and was now stalking her and following her around a few weeks after that. I came home from university classes and my roommates, five tall and strong dudes, notified me that this guy had showed up at our door looking for me, they instantly got a bad vibe, did not let him in, did not tell him anything, and eventually called the police. He was gone by the time I got home, but by their description, it was definitely him. I spent the rest of my college days constantly looking over my shoulder, but I never saw him again. My vigilant roommates never saw him again. Though he used his daughter to try to friend me on Facebook and other social media, what an absolute pervert and creepy weirdo of a pedo.